Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Nadia Hassan together with Suhi Asman. It is a brand new day. It is a brand new year. It's a brand new week. And of course, uh, if you actually go on Facebook, you see a lot of, I think a lot of my friends, I see a lot of first day of school pictures, don't you think? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, according to the Ministry of Education, so had nearly half a million of students registered for year one uh, at 7,765 primary schools. Jeez, there were that many schools in Malaysia. These are the children. Children are our future. Yes, Teach correct. them well and let them lead the way. Sorry, it's a song stuck in my head. Interesting, <laughs> this year actually is going to be a very big year for change. We're looking at the heads of central banks actually moving on. Uh, Australia, India, all of them, their terms are up. Our own, Tan Suizati, due to step down in April, and the big question is, who's she going? To, who's going to replace her? Well, there's a lot of names being bandied. You know, I mean, this is our speculative, by the way. But the, um, some names are including Dato' White, Sri Abdul Wahid Omar, our economics minister, and not to mention the existing deputy governors as well. Well, looking at the market and how it's actually welcome 2016, we are looking at it in the doldrums. Essentially, I think everybody is still on holiday or everybody's still hungover because it closed down 39 points actually to 1653.37. It actually continued the trend that you saw before we actually closed out uh, 2015. Definitely less buoyant. Uh, the total value trade was only 1.7 billion. And interestingly enough, usually in these sectors, we will have uh, stocks with momentum, but we don't have any of it this year today, mostly because negative moment, the, the momentum in the market was just way too poor. Yeah, correct. And, and you know, 278 counters closed up, while 708 counters closed down. Uh, and also on the losing streak. According to MIDF today, Malaysia recorded net withdrawal of 19.5 billion in 2015 as compared to 6.9 billion ringgit recorded in 2014. It was the highest among the seven Asian markets that MIDF tracked and it was the most severe foreign attrition since 2007-2008 financial crisis. Exactly. Are we surprised? Well, yes. Uh, uh, you're, are you surprised at these no, numbers? Though? Well, I'm not really. I'm not really surprised because we have price been pricing in, and we see a lot of foreign equity outflow. You know, since the beginning of the year. Exactly, foreign funds actually sold for 20 consecutive weeks. This is stories on the edge markets during the May September period. It's actually one of the longest stretches they've seen since the 1997-98 crisis. So it's a big thing to to look at. And I think oil price will still continue to be a theme. Iran, Iran. Uh, depends on whether you're American. If you want to say right. Iran, is due to flood the oil market is at least about half a million barrels a day and it's going to pressure air price up, uh, air price sorry oil, oil price, price up until well I, I bet you if they could charge us for air they probably would uh, US fifteen dollars to US twenty five in the next foreseeable future good for you who are of course filling your cars at the pump do you realize that our petrol's actually gone down again? Yes, it has gone down. You know, um, it was announced by the KPD and KK, the ministry. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I was surprised because I filled my tank and then I was realizing it was less than, uh, the, than what I was usually spent. Oh. But it doesn't really translate for us into better consumers. But anyway, moving on to like regionally. Regionally, it was a big story today because of China. China's market suspended their trading because they hit what they call the circuit breakers, right? Mm -hmm. Because of weak manufacturing data, you actually saw the main indexes, indices, sorry, shedding between 7% to about 8%. Correct. You know, under the circuit breaker rules, right, a move 5% in the CSI 300, which is the benchmark index, will trigger a 50-minute uh, halt for the stocks, options, and also futures. But today it was 7% to 8%, you know, so this really sends a worrying signals and affects the whole market yeah. regionally. Exactly. So it's a hair trigger because the, the people in the stock market got burned so badly last year that they didn't really want a repeat of that to happen. Shanghai Composites, of course, before everything went belly up, 6.9% to 3,296.258. Uh, I think Japan was an interesting market because I think after so many years, the foreigners have finally started to cash out. Uh, they are, as you can see by the chart, it's going to be interesting to see how that market actually continues to reflect. Looking ahead, of course, the China will continue to be the story. But moving on to a hot stock of the day, it wasn't easy to pick one simply very much because we there wasn't really much movie movement today. Inari Emerton is what we picked today. So share price has actually doubled since uh, January 2015 to 1 ringgit 82. Today it went up 2.46 to 3 ringgit 75. At its highest, you saw it almost at like 7% up. 7%, correct. And this company involved in the back-end semiconductor packaging and radio frequency final testing. And it's controlled by Dato Si Tong Kok Ki, which is 27% say. And interesting though, they derive most of their sales from Avago, which is a, a, a company listed in NASDAQ. And and Avago does what chips and supply to apples and other uh, yeah, manufacturers. Yeah, one in just the very long supply chain. So this follows into the theme that we saw today because the theme seems to be that exports lidden stocks are right. still going to be the ones that won. They were the big winners last year. Anybody who basically didn't deal in ring.
ringgit and sold in US dollar was considered the big winner. I think it's still going to be this trend. Although if you read some of the reports, they do think that the dollar may, the shine may come off the dollar a little bit. There will be a slight halt to its rise, but uh, we don't know how long it's going to take. Kanang Research Head uh, Chan Ken Yu, who's a lovely guy, he says he still likes these export-driven counters until the ringgit starts to weaken. Here's the question though, will the ringgit weaken this year? Well, that's a lot of, I mean, that isn't anybody's guess. You know, a lot of research houses are predicting the ringgit is going to go as far or as high as 4.5. Yeah. But some people think that the ringgit might actually, you know, um, uh, strengthen back to, to, you know, 4 ringgit. You know, I mean, on weaker commodity prices and, and this Fed fund tightening cycle Well, we'll thing. have to see whether that goes off. I mean, people do tend to think that the real level of the ringgit is around 3.95 and 3.85. No, nowhere near the 3.4 that, of course, we saw ages ago. Correct. But it doesn't seem anywhere near that at the moment. I think sentiment still has to go in. Capacity expansion is good for Inari, going back to that. Uh, they are looking to sort of boost their base and they're doing this RF, you know, regular frequency, back-end processing for facilities in Penang. And research seems to think that this is going to be good for them because a bulk of their earnings comes from RF. Yes, correct. And also, Inari uh, growth ties closely to, as I mentioned earlier, Avago, as well as other customers like Huawei, LG, and so on. Because according to IDC, they track that the smartphone market is going to grow at a four-year Kager or compound annual growth rate of 7.44% to $1.9 billion as well in by 2019. And looking at the brokers, RHB has a buy call of five ringgit target price, while TA Research has a buy call of four ringgit and 60 cents. Of course, we are also looking at the fact that they have a dividend policy. It gives yeah. about a yield about 3%, which is actually fairly uh, decent. decent. So basically, just to wrap it up for you, we're looking at Inari Amazon today for a hot stock. It rose, it closed about 2% up, but it rose almost as high as 7% up. Definitely, this is due to the fact that it's an export link counter, and those are the only ones that seem to be moving in the current age because people are still fearful over where the ringgit's going to track.